Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about some basic watercolor techniques and the cool and the warm color groups. So before you begin a watercolor painting, it's good to have all the following things ready to go. I have, of course, a messy mat, you can see there. I've got my picture done, drawn, outlined, all ready. I've got a nice little cup of water here and my paint set. One thing you'll notice on a basic watercolor paint set is that the warm colors are all right next to each other red, orange, and yellow, and you've got all the cool colors right next to each other, which is green, blue, and purple. Okay, this is kind of a messier set, but these areas here can be used to mix colors together. If you wanted to mix a yellowish uh, orange, you could do that and then use it, and then, of course, unlike me, you could then clean that area and use it again for other mixtures. Um, alrighty, so first thing I like to do is start with um, either the top or the bottom. It really doesn't matter for this. We're going to be doing probably more warm colors in the top half of the paper where there's sky or sun or sunset or whatever it is that's happening in your, your image. And then the bottom half might have more of the cool colors as long as you show both color groups. But even though we can mix between the color groups, like you can mix the blues and purples and greens, or you can mix the reds, oranges, and yellows, we're not going to mix the warms and the cools together in the same space. We don't want to be mixing red with green because then it'll just get very muddy and we want to keep these colors looking very beautiful and vibrant. Another thing I do before I begin is I think about the colors I'll be using and I just add a little dot of water in each of these colors because you know when you first open a set of watercolors it's very hard and we want the water to absorb into the color and be ready to, to use. Okay, now the basic rule of watercolors, the more water, the lighter the color will be. The less water, the darker it will be. Okay, why don't I start with, let's start with the cool colors here. We'll do a nice kind of bluish color down here. Because it's a big space, I'm going to go ahead and just put pure water on the area that I plan on painting in. The nice thing that I outlined it in crayon is I created a little barrier here so that the colors shouldn't bleed into the other section if I want a different color there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and just take a basic blue and you never need to grind it into the watercolors. You only need just a little bit, just a little dab and it goes a long way. And you can see here it's nice and bold. Um, and then just go ahead and, you know, fill in the space. And I could just keep this a solid blue, but, you know, we want to have fun with this. We want to maybe blend it a little because it is supposed to be kind of an Arctic Ocean. I'm going to go ahead and add some green to it as well, nice bluish green. So um, you can see here near the top, it's much darker. That's where I started, but I didn't dip my brush back in the water. I just let it kind of fade all the way down to a lighter tone. Now you can do that, and that's called gradient shading when you go from a dark to light. The darker you want your color to be, keep adding layers of that paint. So as you can see here, I'm just adding more blue, and it's becoming just a whole other shade darker of blue. Okay, instead of adding more water, just add another layer of that color. Okay, but if it was too light, you might want to then think about adding more water and spreading it around some more. Okay, that'd be the opposite way to handle it. Now, if I want this to be a bluish green, again, I could mix it on my palette, but because it's a small enough space, I'm just going to mix it right here on the paper. Okay, and you can kind of see that coming together, but decide what the whole shape will be and make it that way. So, for example, I don't want to keep mixing lots and lots of different versions of colors in this ocean here in this stream. Make it the same all the way down so that it stays consistent in that space. Awesome, I love it. Okay, now I might move on to another section. Let's say over here I want to do some purple. Again, I always like to put just even a thin, thin coat of water down because it does help spread the color. Here, I'll show you what happens when you don't do the water. If you don't do water first, it tends to get a little bit broken. Well, actually, Example that actually looked okay. Um, but you'll notice it's very, very, very dark. Okay, maybe a little darker than what you might have wanted. Here, it's going to be a little bit lighter and much, much easier to spread. All right, so I can kind of go in that area and, and spread it around very easily for this purple. That's really pretty. Um, if you've done this and you thought, oh my gosh, I didn't wet it first, look how dark it is, no worries. Just go ahead and do a little bit of water over it our school bell and then go ahead and take a tissue to lighten it once there's a thin layer of water over it I like to work with a tissue next to me so that this is almost like an eraser 
I just simply go inside this space and I just very lightly dab that space. Okay, and then that lightens it a whole shade. All right. And there we go. And then of course you can smooth it out or if you feel, oh, it got too light, then just, you know, add just a tiny bit more paint or whatever it is you want to do to make it all come together. You can imagine how pretty this will be as you go along. I do recommend if you're starting with cool colors, don't jump back and forth between warm and cool. Keep working with that color group until it's done. And that way um, you can fully clean your brush, clean out the water. The water's going to get very kind of bluish purple and darker as you go. And then start with your new color group. And I think that's it. Have fun. I can't wait to see these. Thanks, guys.